All right, welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. Sazi, you are taking a look at shares of Intel today coming off of a downgrade uh, from the folks over at Raymond James. Intel's had an interesting uh, last couple of months here. Pat Gelsinger now in as the company's CEO. Um, and we've really seen some enthusiasm, as we can see on the year-to-date chart, around the story for Intel. Uh, talk us through, through what, what the commentary is today. Yeah, Miles, Intel shares are up about about 22% since Pat Gelsinger was announced as Intel's next CEO on January 13th. So a lot of optimism on his leadership. But Raymond James is stepping in here. Chris Queso is the analyst of Raymond James saying, uh-uh, no go. Uh, downgrading the stock to uh, an underperform for market for perform, really for two reasons. First, it says uh, Intel won't reach its goal of opening new foundries and making chips for other companies. And then to that point, no, point number two, is that uh, Intel will continue to see pain financially as, is, as it invests billions of dollars in CapEx and other costs to help build out their, uh, just build out more internal manufacturing capacity to address the chip shortage. But I do want to remind people what exactly Intel is in fact spending $20 billion on. Here's a clip uh, from my chat with uh, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger just a couple weeks ago. When we think about the world situation today, there's an extraordinary demand for semiconductors, right? As we've seen, basically, the world is becoming more digital. Every aspect of that runs in semiconductors. And then COVID put us into a higher gear, right? It just accelerated, you know, remote work, remote education, telemedicine, automotive. You know, all of these are now seeing the shortages of semiconductors. So the world needs more of these capabilities. Also, the world wants some more balanced supply chain. There's an extraordinary concentration in Asia. Right, so U.S. and Europe, and we're one of the few companies that can step into that. And fairly common sense here, here, Miles. Chip shortage, you have to increase production, and Intel's going to spend the money to do it, which, again, I, I don't think Gelsinger is under, you know, that this, this is going to be an easy job turning the company around, but he's an optimistic guy. He, he gets up really early in the morning. He's working hard. He's trying to turn the company around. But I will note this, too. This is not anything new, uh, uh, an analyst coming out negative on Intel. Out of all the analysts on the sell side that cover Intel, the stock already has eight sell ratings or underperforms here. And you just look at the multiples on the stock, Intel trading at about 15 times forward earnings, AMD 41 times, NVIDIA uh, mm -hmm. 43 times. So AMD and NVIDIA, a lot of optimism there. If Intel could just get past this investment cycle, maybe, maybe, it still, maybe it fetches a multiple like an AMD and NVIDIA over the next couple of years. Yeah, it's um, it's just interesting when any of these names come up because it feels like the same story in the last four years has gotten remixed five different ways. And the ultimate answer is uh, we like NVIDIA more than we like Intel. We like AMD more than we like Intel. We like Micron more than we like, you know, Intel or Qualcomm, whatever it is. I mean, it seems that we, we sort of end up coming back to you know, Taiwan, Sammy, Micron, NVIDIA, AMD, uh, even though, as we discuss on the show all the time, you know, everybody this side of the Mississippi knows is a bull case for semiconductors and chips and, and anything adjacent to that. So, um, you know, Intel has at least caught a bit on, on, on that side of it. Yeah, Intel's been, uh, I would say, a, a whipping boy uh, on Wall Street. Uh, and they've taken a lot of beatings the past year and a half, even though they have put up some pretty good, some pretty good performances. You know, they have Mobileye. That division is doing pretty well. But again, Gelsinger was brought in to turn the company around. And it, it's going to take some time to do it. And ultimately, he's, he's probably the right guy to do it. Yeah, uh, certainly a very interesting uh, story to follow. Just a, a storied name for a number of reasons, not the least of which the role that Intel as a stock played uh, you know, back some 20 years ago. And then thinking about where uh, Pat Gelsinger, another veteran of the Valley with a lot of success under his belt, can take the company. Um, that is at a mature stage, but certainly trying to, to re-accelerate some of those growth engines, get people excited about Intel once again.